Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to just say a quick hello. I believe it's Bess Yaakov Elementary School up there. If I'm correct, yeah. wave to me. And when I'm done talking, if uh, we can maybe meet outside, we'll take a picture. Yes. Um, I just want to say, uh, Mr. Speaker, that there's a lot of reasons why people get involved in politics and manage to get themselves elected. I think that I'm one of the many people who was a community person, a bit of what you call a grassroots activist, and I was involved in a ratepayers association and other community groups, and one of those people who often wrote letters to the editor and probably provided a lot of entertainment for my friends and relatives. I got to know a lot of people who I now call friends in the York Region area and even uh, in Toronto who also, similar to me, were concerned with things in their community. And it's very interesting how in Markham, all the different ratepayers associations act actually get together. They call it the Miracle Group, and they get together and, you know, trade um, suggestions and often work together on things like uh, we saw a lot of um, grassroots organized groups countering the mayor of Markham's proposal for a very large-scale uh, hockey uh, arena in Markham. And uh, one of those activists, Karen Ray, actually got elected to council in the last round. Evelyn Ellison is vice president of the Thornhill Ward 1 Association, and she is watching very closely and very anxious to see new legislation in effect. These are people who often have to use their own money to counter lawsuits. Um, they are private individuals. They shouldn't have to incorporate their ratepayer associations or homeowners groups in order to protect themselves from slap lawsuits. But I think it's all about the spirit of democracy, Mr. Speaker. That's why we're here. We're here to ensure that people's voices are heard, our voices, yes, of course, but the general public. And often when we're speaking here, and that's why I really did want to get up today, we're speaking on behalf of those, um, not just in our constituency, but people who contact us from even outside our ridings who are concerned about many issues that they want us to propagate and speak on their behalf. So it's really an honour and a privilege to speak on their behalf today. I want to mention a few you know, people who were slapped with lawsuits, and it's a little surprising because there were two Markham councillors, former councillor Aaron Shapiro and re-elected Valerie Burke um, in the new um, Thornhill uh, amalgamated large riding in Markham, and they were sued because they took photo ops for some newspaper articles on private property because they were protesting a farm that was uh, appealing to for rezoning for development. That rezoning did not take place. All of the councillors in Markham voted against it except for one. And they had to deal with this lawsuit, and Erin Shapiro did not put her name on the ballot in the next election, and you have to really wonder why, even though she's a lawyer, even though she's elected to council, that possibly it was one of many factors that caused her to decide not to run for re-election and not to stay in the public office. And that, that would be very disappointing to me and I think to you, Mr. Speaker, if we were to think that people don't put their name forward for re-election on municipal councils because they're afraid of lawsuits. Anthony Nero is in Vaughan, north of my riding, and he's also a real grassroots. You might remember him from his yourbillion.ca campaign. He had a video campaign on YouTube. And he got um, slapped with a lawsuit from a, a local developer just because he was questioning how councillors and the mayor of Vaughan were um, not questioning the lack of progress on a Vaughan hospital. Well, here we are years after his dealing with a slap lawsuit, which was thankfully settled, but it was during a campaign period and they just wanted him to stay quiet for that one month or six weeks of the campaign period. He had to use his own financial resources. He had to appeal to his supporters to help him. Even though he had insurance, he didn't want to go through the insurance because the insurance he knew 
would tell him to cease and desist and want to settle, and he did not want to cease and desist. The local newspaper, The Vaughan Citizen, was sued as well in his lawsuit, and they backed down. They wouldn't publish the ads that he was paying them to publish, and they backed down, and maybe um, they consulted with the Newspaper Guild and realized that they could be in trouble for refusing to publish somebody's articles just because they're afraid as well of getting sued. So we've created a climate where we can talk about democracy all we want, but if people don't feel comfortable coming to our committees, um, contacting ministries, contacting their local MPPs, if people don't feel comfortable writing those letters to the editor, then what kind of democracy do we have, Mr. Speaker? So I appeal to everybody here to um, keep that dialogue open. It's not just about passing motions and passing bills and um, you know, having our debate in the House, but to keep the dialogue open with those people in our ridings who, you know, might, they may give us a hard time every now and then, Mr. Speaker. We all have uh, people who are there. But I think we also have a lot of respect for those individuals. And even though they're keeping our feet to the fire sometimes, I think that um, oftentimes maybe we deserve it and maybe we do need to be reminded that uh, we're elected to represent their interests, even if we may not uh, always agree with um, their opinion and maybe not even agree with their methodology but we are there to represent everybody and uh, we need to um, express ourselves of course we have our own opinions but keeping in mind that we're representing many in our constituency as well i never did seek to incorporate the beverly glen ratepayers association of which i was president at one time but i did start looking into it and hadn't you know quite gotten to the point of progressing with it when I decided to put my name on a ballot. The Ratepayers Association is still active. Actually, my son, Josh, is now president. So I, if uh, this legislation wasn't proceeding, I may have to. He yelled, sue, and I just realized I thought he's yelling somebody should sue somebody, and it's just somebody's first name. So may, maybe, that, maybe that's a scary first name to have in some circumstances in politics, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> So, um, so thankfully, I'm not getting sued. We just have a member in the government whose first name is Sue. So don't get scared. I don't want the I don't want the kids to get scared up there. That um, we want to have that input, and even from the kids. You know, when I was campaigning, there was a girl, and I have a feeling she was from Eitzchayim, not from Besyakov. A girl from Eitzchayim in grade five, and she was studying government at the time and she was uh, holding a debate with her class during the campaign period, and she was very excited. She recognized me just walking on the street ca canvassing, and um, she said to her mother, that's Gila Marto, and her mother didn't kind of believe her, but she rolled down the window and asked. And we took a picture, which she showed her teacher, and I hope she got extra marks, but she, apparently she represented me in the class debate, and um, she did send me a message that she won the debate, thankfully, or maybe I wouldn't have won the election because I saw it as kind of a premonition. But I saw her as a future activist, as somebody I want to see involved in the issues, writing letters to the editor, contacting politicians, getting engaged on her student council. And I want her to do it in a climate without fear, Mr. Speaker, without concern for slap lawsuits and um, without um, concern for her reputation that um, somehow future employers might consider her as some kind of liability, somebody who gets into trouble and gets sued a lot. So we want to encourage the kids, yes, to come and visit us here at Queen's Park, but to also maybe have an exercise where they write a letter to the editor, or how about writing a letter to me? And, um, and tell me what you learned today and what issues you think we should be um, concerned about here at Queen's Park on your behalf in the future. We're talking today also invasive species, which means um, you know, foreign species of, of uh, animals. Um, they mentioned before zebra mussels, um, which I've cut my feet on many times, and maybe you too, when you go to the lakes, you're told to wear those water shoes that kind of aren't very fashionable, Mr. Speaker, but we do wear them because we don't want to get cut on our feet. We're talking about ending uh, coal plants in Ontario. Well, um, obviously, the people of Ontario and all three parties in the legislature have no interest in opening new coal plants. We might question, though, why the gas plants couldn't have been put where the coal plants were 
were, um, but uh, we're certainly not interested in opening up more coal plants. I think we all want to have clean water and clean air for future generations and um, get them engaged without worrying about slap lawsuits. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for the time.